Our problem is we want to find a function f, which is differentiable on a closed interval a, b, but such that f prime is not continuous on that interval. At a glance, it doesn't seem like this problem should be very hard. Okay, we have some obvious candidates. Let's rule those out. So first, you might think, well, why don't we try a function with a jump discontinuity? Recall from calculus, if we have that a function f is differentiable at the point x, then that function is also going to be continuous at that point x. So if I want the function to be differentiable at all points in this closed interval, that function must also be continuous on the interval also. So we can't have jump discontinuities. Next attempt, well, we could use a continuous function, but why don't we put a corner in there somewhere? So in this case, let's take a look. Okay, well, problem's gonna be, if I say that f is differentiable on a closed interval a, b, I mean that our derivative is defined at every point in that interval. So that'll rule out corners because at a corner, we have no derivative. So that's not gonna give us the discontinuity that we want either. As a final pass, we could pull out the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which would say, okay, if we have some given function f of x, we could form a new function, capital F of x, given by this integral here. Now, if our function f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, then the derivative of capital F is just gonna be little f. We could try to push through some functions with discontinuities to get the discontinuity to come out little f, but for the obvious candidates, we're just gonna run the same problems as before. Now, there's one kind of discontinuity we didn't try, that forced by oscillation. So for instance, if I consider f of x equal to sine of one over x, what's happening here is, as we go into zero, this thing oscillates more and more wildly between minus one and one. So we're never gonna have a limit at zero itself. To make this useful for our problem, okay, we'll have to adjust just so that we can get the differentiable property on the interval that we're interested in. So we'll use f of x equal to x squared sine of one over x when x is non-zero, then zero when x is zero, and I'll just confine things to the interval minus one to one. Now, we have a problem at x equals zero. So first, let's compute the derivative using the definition of derivative. Okay, so what do we do? Use our usual definition, we have our quotient. I take the limit as h goes to zero. Okay, by definition, we're letting f of zero be equal to zero. So I want the limit of this gadget here. The h is cancel. Then I'm left with h sine of one over h. Now, sine of anything is always gonna be between minus one and one. If we multiply through by h, okay, we have the item we're taking the limit of. By the squeeze theorem, we're gonna get this to go to zero. So minus h goes to zero as h goes to zero, and h goes to zero. So the middle term must go to zero also. That's our derivative. Now, we want the derivative on the interval from minus one to one. We just worked it out at zero. For the rest of the interval, we could just use our usual differentiation rules. So product rule and chain rule. We apply those to f of x. Okay, we work it out. And we get this function here for the derivative off of zero. We want to show there's a discontinuity for the derivative at x equals zero. What we need for continuity at a point? We need that our functions defined at the point, that the limit exists at the point, and that those two items are equal. We'll show that the limit does not exist at the point for the derivative. Now, if we assume that, that limit did exist, or even that we had continuity, then if I put any sequence that converges to zero into the function, those values have to converge to the limit. Now, we'll just find one sequence going to zero, such that when we put in the function, we get something that does not converge at all. So I can use 
x sub n equal to 1 over n pi. If we put that into the function, sine of multiples of pi, we're going to go to 0. So we'll have minus cosine of n pi. Now, cosine at multiples of pi is going to oscillate between minus 1 and 1. So the limit won't converge in this case. So it does not exist. We could also try x sub n equal to 2 over 2n plus 1 pi. Okay, so odd times pi. This will make the cosine go away, and then we can work with the sine part. In either case, we see that we have a discontinuity for the derivative at x equals 0, as promised.